with him. In Genesis third chapter, man went away from this relationship. And God comes down crying, Adam, where art thou? Jesus came to establish our relationship with God, a relationship of love. He that loveth not knoweth not God. The first question Jesus asked his disciples and the leader of Christianity in the first century is in John chapter 21 verse 15. Simon son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? He said, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. Love is defined in 1 Corinthians 13 chapter as true loving relationship in action between us, God, and others. Relationship is based on love, but religion is based on tradition. Religion is a ritual, and there are rituals happening all over the world. But none of those rituals, none of those religions will reconcile us with God. The previous slide we saw that only 30% of this world are Christians. And you can look at the map of this world and there's not many countries that are Christians. And then when you go to the next slide, you find out that even though 30% of this world is Christians, about 17% are Catholics, and there are only about 6% that are Protestants. Sadly to say, Christianity is on the decline. Islam is on the rise. Why? Because those who profess Christianity have failed to have a relationship with God. We heard this wonderful message that God spoke through brother last week about what happens when we have this relationship with God. We heard Brother Robinson and the church and Sister Nancy who spoke about the relationship with God. This world was full of religious people when Christ came into this world. The Pharisees were such. They knew the Bible from cover to cover, the Old Testament, but they did not know, nor did they have anything to do with the God who wrote the Bible. They said Abraham was our father. They said God was our father. Jesus said if God were your father, you would know me because I proceeded and came from God and I have come to declare him. Of the six percent who are Protestants in this world, statistics and revelation from those who have had after death experiences and have gone to heaven and hell and came back have declared that only one in thousand enter into the kingdom of heaven. So based on statistics and based on reality and based on revelation, not mine, but the body of Christ, only 0.1% of this world's population enters in the kingdom of God, which is called heaven. The other 99.9 goes to hell, the lake of fire which adds value to the message that Brother Prasad preached through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. I was on fire after he spoke that message through the Spirit of the Lord. That is why we have a lot of work to do. Amen. Let's go on to the next slide. Religion can only reform a person. You can ask one of the brothers in our church who works in the correctional field. They are hiring as civil engineers to design more buildings so they can accommodate more people. Because religion, there's religion in this country, there's religion in the West, there's religion in all religions all over the world, but religion can only reform. It cannot transform. What is religion? Religion is like astronomy. I love astronomy though. It's like astronomy looking at a faraway planet and saying, wow, this is that planet, this is that dimension, 
this is how it looks, this is its nature. But Christianity is owning that planet. Because I own the creator who created that planet and I belong to the creator who created that planet. And that cross that you see bright and shining is there to say that Christianity transforms. Christianity transforms. Christianity is a relationship. Christianity is a true religion in which Jesus wants to have fellowship with us. Religion only reforms. You can try to look into the head of a person and try to change it, but nothing is going to happen. You can stand at the wailing wall and wail the rest of your life. Nothing is going to happen unless you realize I am my beloved's and my beloved is mine. As it says in the book of Song of Solomon, chapter 6, verse 3. I love him. He's my lover. Amen. Let's move on to the next slide. So what happens when we have, well, let's talk about the martyrs for relationship with due respect for our brothers and sisters who died for Christ. They did not die for a ritual. They did not die for a religion. But they died for a relationship. You see those martyrs? The leader of the church encouraging them. And meanwhile, men and women are crucified around them. The Romans are watching them. And the lions have been leashed. Christian martyrs in the 4th century, who were burnt with the house they lived in. Christian martyrs in China who were brought for their relationship with God. They were thrown to the lions, crucified, burnt for loving Christ, arrested for Christ. They did this all because of a relationship, not a religion or a ritual. So what happens when we have this relationship and get out of this mess of religion and rituals and forget that you belong to a religion and start focusing on Christ. Glory. Let's go on to the next slide and we'll see what happens when we pass from religion. In Genesis 3.9, we hear this beautiful voice from God. Adam, where art thou? Did he want Adam's money? Did he want Adam's Efforts? Did he want Adam's intelligence? No. He came to Adam's home. He called him by his name. And all he wanted to know was where he was. He wanted to hug his son. In the book of Luke it says, Say the son of Adam, the son of God. He wanted to enjoy his company. God wanted Adam. He didn't want his. If you read in the book of Song of Solomon, chapter 2, it talks about Jesus coming to his bride, his lover, his beloved. And he says, Oh my thou that dwells in the clefts of the rock, this world is not safe. <coughs> Therefore, the Tao, you can see the little Tao hiding under the clefts of the rock. And Jesus is calling and saying, Oh my Tao that dwelleth in the clefts of the rock, let me see thy voice, let me see thy face. And then he says, Come early, let's go into the vineyards. Let's lodge in the villages. There will I give thee my love. You know, we are all very busy. We have a busy lifestyle. I work for about 12 hours too. And then... I have to work during the weekend also. I have a very busy lifestyle. And we all do. But one day, as I was sleeping, I suddenly heard the voice of Jesus. And this is what he told me. My son, I miss you. Can you get up early in the morning at 4 o'clock? And come into my presence. The creator. And I'm a little speck of dust in this planet earth. And he misses me. 
And when I realized that, from that time, I try my best to get up early in the morning and come into his presence early. Sometimes I don't, but I try my best too. Because Jesus longs for our fellowship. Brother Robinson, inspired by the Spirit of the Lord, showed this beautiful verse in Psalm chapter 42, verse 1. As the deer panteth after the water brooks. In fact, when the deer panteth after the water brooks, you can hear the deer cry. Cry out for water. My soul thirsteth for the living God. Jesus said to the Samaritan woman, This water that you drink, it will make you thirsty. But the water that I give you will be in you a well of water springing into everlasting life. That water will quench your thirst. That's why Jesus said, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Nothing will satisfy us but Jesus. Because we were made in the image and fashion and dimension of God. And only God can fill us. We are more than this world. Everything in planet earth cannot fill us because our dimension is bigger than planet earth. I might stand here when I go to the doctor, the doctor will say, well, you missed six feet foot by half an inch, don't worry. You're still tall. But, and they measure my waist and say it's about 36. But that's not my dimension. My dimension is the dimension of my soul and spirit. My soul and spirit is vast in dimension. It is bigger than this universe. So what in this universe is going to satisfy me? Nothing. Only the God who is bigger than the universe can fill me. That's why you play on the computer for 14 hours and you're depressed. You go to movies and it doesn't satisfy you. You do all kinds of things that are not proper. doesn't satisfy you. spend time with friends partying. It doesn't satisfy you. Why? We can drink the water from hell and enjoy all that hell has to offer. But still, we won't be satisfied. Because we were made in the image of God. Not like the animals, not like the birds, not like the trees. Only God can satisfy us. And nothing inferior to us can satisfy us. Only what is superior to us can satisfy us. And the only thing, only person in this universe that is superior to us is God. We are superior than the angels. We are superior than the planets and galaxies. Only God can satisfy us. And God wants to enjoy us. Let's go on to the next slide. Amen. Now one thing we need to understand is God does communicate to us. He has given us a love letter, and that is the Holy Bible. It's from our heavenly bridegroom, who betrothed us to himself, who is engaged to us. He writes love letters to us. And, you know, he's wrote more love letters in the Bible than any husband or wife would have written in their lifetime. Because he loves us so much. And therefore... We need to read the Bible because he talks to us. It may not always be possible that God will speak to us and we will hear his voice audibly. And if he does, that's wonderful. But God does speak to us from the Bible. He gives us direction. We need to love the Bible because in the beginning was the word and the word was with God. And the word was God. There are many people that say, I love Jesus. But do you love the real Jesus is this. Because in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And if we love Jesus, we will love the Bible. And we will follow it with His strength. God communicates through us through the Bible. That's how the, we grow in that relationship. Let's go on to the next slide. Yeah, praise God. We can. Hallelujah. Now, what is really Christianity? What happens in this relationship? What you see at the bottom of the slide is metal sodium, which is also called nutrium. When you take three cups of water and add the metal sodium into it, the sodium starts reacting. It may have been laying on the shelf for a long time doing nothing. And someone might say, what are you going to do with this dirty old metal? And that guy takes it and puts it in that cup of water. When you add sodium to metal, 
one of the first things that happens is it swims around in that water. It catches fire. And then, you know, water is H2O. It takes that water and starts emitting hydrogen. The hydrogen self-ignites. Sodium catches fire. It starts emitting light. And then it becomes sodium hydroxide and dissolves in water. You cannot see that sodium anymore because it's now dissolved in water. That's what happens to us when we contact God. When we have a relationship with God, we burn, we shine, and then we blend with God. After that, all you can see is water. Christianity is becoming one with God. With God the Father, with the Holy Spirit, and with Jesus, our Heavenly Bridegroom. Let's go move on to the next slide. Religion versus relationship. Christianity is the only religion that talks about relationship. Every other religion says God. And some of the gods they worship are dead in the grave and sealed. I've been to one of them. Jesus Christ, his grave is open. Because he's a God of relationship. He loved us so much that the grave could not hold him. He was yearning for his wife. And he shattered the pains of death. And he rose from the dead. The religion, true religion of lake. God is our father. We call him Abba Father. And the spirit of God that is in us cries out and says, Yes, my son, he is your father. We have a witness. Jesus, our heavenly bridegroom. There you see a picture of a bride to be wed, hugging her husband Jesus. That is the love in which we have to grow. Have I grown? No, I have just started. I have a little bit of love for Jesus. And I learn more about the love of Jesus by worshipping God with you all. And we all have to grow in the love and the Holy Spirit is our Blessed Comforter. Let's move on to the next slide. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Now for the love that we have, it's not going to go waste. The crown awaits the bride for her love. But before that, we need to remember one thing. We also have a bride, we who are married. We have to treat that bride like Jesus treats his church. Yes, the Bible says... Wives, submit to your husbands. But the Bible also says to the husbands, give honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel. So what if we do not honor the wife as a weaker vessel? The Bible says, none of your prayers will be answered. If you do not honor your wife as your weaker vessel, your prayers will stay right here. That's what the Bible says. We are stronger. And Jesus is stronger. We need to treat our wives even as Jesus treated us. We... We can provide for our family, we can provide for our children, we can provide for our wives. But if we don't spend time with them, there is no relationship. That's why marriage breaks apart in this country because everybody is busy. They don't have time to have a relationship. And that's why our marriage, our betrothal, the engagement with our Jesus Christ can break if we don't spend time with him. We need to spend time with him. We need to find time with Jesus. The crown awaits us. We are destined to the throne. Esther, one of the pictures there that you see is Esther. There were hundreds of virgins that were gathered from all over the world. They all wanted to be the bride, the queen of King Ahasuerus. All the way to India, the call was given. All the brides, they did makeup, perfume, jewels, all kinds of things according to their own desire. But then the turn came for Esther and Haggai, the king's chamberlain, who walked with the king, lived with the king, breathed the king, asked his, Esther, your time is coming to go before the king. What do you need? And Esther said, you know what I need. You know the king. Tell me what I need. Haggai stands for the Holy Spirit. When Esther did exactly according to the leading of the Holy Spirit, they that are led by the Spirit of the sons of God, Romans 8. Everyone looked at Esther and she got favor in the eyes of everyone. And she went in unto the king and she pleased the king. Even so today, we also need 
to live a life that is pleasing to the king. If he doesn't like channel 99.8, turn it off. If Jesus says, yeah, I want to go back to the Christian channel, get back to the Christian channel, because the Bible says, speaking to yourself in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. When 99.9% of people are burning in hell, how can I be singing about the trees and the woods and the stars and the moon and not about my Savior, Jesus Christ? Jesus. The crown awaits us. Let's walk worthy of the crown. Let's go on to the next slide. There were five virgins. Brother Vinny has composed a wonderful song inspired by the Spirit. The five virgins weren't ready. Now, what is the difference between the five foolish and the five wise? The five wise virgins were burning in their love for Christ. Their love hadn't got quenched. Their love was still burning. They slept, but still they were burning. The other five virgins, they had become cold. Jesus said, before I come, the love of many shall grow cold. That's why we are gathered together as a church, so we can encourage one another so we don't get cold. We need to burn in our love for Jesus. We need to get a little bit of tears, and we need to cry. We need to burn. We need to adore our Lord Jesus Christ. We don't want to be in this group, knocking on the door saying, Lord, open to us. And Jesus says, I never knew you. The word knew you or know you is used in the Bible in the context of the intimacy of marriage. Jesus. Abraham knew his wife. Isaac knew his wife. It is the most intimate relationship. I have been a son, I have been a brother, I am an employee, but the most intimate relationship in life is marriage. And that's the intimate relationship to which Jesus has called us to. There is no big car going to come to take us for the wedding. The cloud has already arrived. If you look up in the spirit, you can see that cloud. The cloud has a window like an aircraft. And the cloud will say to you, get ready, I have come. I have seen that cloud in a vision. And every one of us who are waiting for the coming of Christ have already seen that cloud. And we will be caught up in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. We need to get ready. The rapture is about to happen. Let's go on to the next slide. We are engaged to Jesus. Lord, Let's look out through the window, waiting for our Jesus, who can arrive any moment. With a shout, with the voice of an archangel, with the trump of God, the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive shall be caught up in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. That is Christianity. It is not a religion. It is not a ritual. It is being married to the Son of God. Let us go on to the next slide. Amen. The invitation has been given. What you see there is the table, the wedding table. Those who have gone to heaven and had the opportunity to come back, they've seen the wedding table. Beautiful. And the head of the table is Jesus Christ. The invitation has been sent. Those are the five wise virgins. And what this tells you is objects in the mirror are closer than you think. That's what we see in the mirror when we drive every day. The rapture is closer Amen. than you think. Amen. Jesus said, I'm coming as a thief. Why did he say I'm coming as a thief? Because his rapture is going to happen at the least expected time. Jesus, 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 Jesus. If he knew when it will happen, we'll all be in church. But that's not going to happen. It will be a surprise. And we want to be taken up in the rash. Objects in the mirror are closer yes. than you think. Jesus Christ is coming soon. The wedding is about to take place. Yes. Let's go on to the next slide. Amen. Praise the Lord. We will crown Jesus Christ after the rapture as our king and our husband. Glory, glory, glory. And Jesus will crown us as his bride. All because he wore the crown of thorns on that day. We are destined for the throne. We are not destined to be worrying about our mortgage, parent, worrying about our children, worrying about our bills. 
One day the Lord told me, I heard his voice very clearly, I will provide all your needs, not according to the money in your bank, but according to my riches and glory through Christ Jesus. He has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. The riches of his glory, the riches of his mercy and the riches of his grace is all that we need. We are kings and priests, not beggars. We are children of Almighty God. We are destined for the throne. We will sit on the throne one day. Let's go on to the next slide. We are nearing completion of the message. And that is New Jerusalem, artist conception, coming down from heaven out of God. The Bible tells us that is the bride. How can a city be a bride? I don't have a clue. But that's what the Bible says. When we get there, we'll understand how we can be the bride of Christ and we can also be the city. We are going to spend eternity with God in the city that comprises of us. Precious. Let's go on to the next slide. Christianity is not a religion. It's not a ritual. It's a relationship. If you don't have this relationship, or if I don't have this relationship, let's not pretend. Let's get back. If the word Jesus doesn't bring you to your knees, if it doesn't bring tears to your eyes, if it doesn't make you take vacation for about 21 days to fast and pray, like one of our brothers did, if it doesn't make you leave everything you have and go to the forgotten tribes to preach the word, if it doesn't make you give everything, Jesus said, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. We have been called to Christianity. We may have to die as martyrs, so be it. We love Jesus. May God bless these words and strengthen us.